Test, test, test. All right. It's working. Ish. See how crappy this camera is. I expect it to be a little crappy, but it was really cheap, so. Kind of plan to see if it's worth using or if it's just straight junk. But all right. Maybe move it elsewhere, but we'll leave it there for now. Let's throw a little bit of this up here. This wire, like everything else, is composed of atoms. And if microscopes could magnify 10 million times instead of paltry thousands, one of these atoms probably would appear as a tiny elastic sphere, a sphere formed by negatively charged electrons swarming around a massive nucleus of positive electricity. Some substances, especially metals, do not keep their electrons tightly bound to the individual atoms but allow them to roam around aimlessly between the atoms in the interior of the substance. Such substances are called electrical conductors because if a battery is connected to the ends of a wire made of such a substance, the free electrons drift along the wire, continuing their aimless motions as they drift. It is this mass movement of electrons that we call an electric current. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be episode three 
of experimenting with some crystal radio technology. For those of you who tuned in on my first stream, we were working on building a coil. The beginnings of our, what I'm calling, most basic crystal radio. Now, I was using the phrase Boy Scout radio. But I've actually simplified this design even more than the design of a Boy Scout radio. We'll get into that here as we go. But what I'm going to demonstrate today, I actually want you guys to hear this thing. Goodbye. Oh, that's nice. I think the battery just died on the camera that I bought. I'm, I'm questioning whether it's going to work out because I'm not sure that it has the ability to stay powered on. I, I realized after I bought it, it doesn't have a power brick. It does have a USB port, so we're going to plug that in and see if it gives persistent power. If it does not, then this thing might have to go back because if it can't run on its own power source, it's not going to be useful to me. So let's, let's experiment and see what we find there. What I'm going to do this afternoon is share with you... Um, well, I've got the thing working. <laughs> the radio is radioing. I've got some amplifier options here to where I can set it up so you guys can hear it and see just what you can get out of a basic crystal radio. And then the goal has always been that we're going to be expanding upon that beyond just you know the most basic crystal radio into some more advanced designs. Hey, it powers via USB. Cool. We're going to be able to make that work. Now I'm going to need a little splitter here. So let me grab one of those. And we should be able to keep going. But I need a little USB hub because I don't have enough ports. Uh, let's see here. Is this a USB 3? I think it is. Let's see. Yep, I think this is 3. We will find out. Actually, it probably doesn't need to be three. Probably only needs to be two. But let's see. That is capture. I just made a purchase that I should have bought a long time ago. Um, I've been using these little stream deck. No, cam link. Yeah, cam link devices from Elgato. And just not working out. I use them for my HDMI capture. Problem is, HDMI, or I'm sorry, both HDMI and USB are a little on the wiggly side. And the wiggly side causes me problems. Alright, let's see what we've got here. Is the camera on? Does the camera sync? Deactivate, activate, and the verdict is yes, no, maybe. So far it's a no. Come on, all I'm trying to do is get power. It's a thing. Really? Is it going to be that big of a brat? I see USB 3 hub. Okay, hang on. Let me do this. Let me unplug the HDMI. Okay, so is the basic camera working? The basic camera is working. So can I get capture through here is the question. Mm, yes, I can. All right. And it froze. Okay, so no. Not going to capture through a USB hub. All right. We'll change things around a little bit more. We'll get this set up so that it works. Don't you worry. Anyway, what I was saying is I uh, I picked up or I ordered a Black Magic capture card. That's a four port card that should resolve some of my issues with USB being highly Reliable. Okay, let's try this. And this camera's not necessarily pointing at anything in particular. But I want it to work. Okay, hi, there we go. Alright, sweet. Um, Alright, let's take a look at the crystal set. 
in its current state. That's part of the reason we wanted this camera. So, right here is what I'm calling the most basic crystal radio. You've got a coil on the right hand side. That's the first coil I've ever wound that I can recall. It's 0.31 millihenries according to my LCR meter. The bottom right hand corner here, we've got a fine stock clip with a connection to an aerial wire. This is just a, a wire antenna going outside. And that's connected at the bottom side of the coil. The top side of the coil, that's our ground connection. The ground connection, as you would suspect, connects to ground, earth. It also runs down to the negative terminal for your headphones. Where the antenna connects on the bottom side of the coil, we run over to a diode. This is a germanium diode, a 1N34A. The other side of the diode, that's our audio output. The diode is our detector. That's what turns the RF into AF, or audio frequency. And then I've got a BNC connector here. All together now, all together now, this will receive AM broadcast band radio. And I'm going to show you. Now, I've got these headphones right here. These things are pretty cool. These are H43 or H-43B slash U. These are some sort of military surplus headphone. I don't know what, where they're from. Came in a really old box. It's a good box. And they get these rubber ear cups. They're super uncomfortable. But if I put this on and connect it to this crystal set, I hear radio. Now, it's not loud enough for you guys to hear, but I want you to hear it. So what I've done is I have, I tried to build a couple of LM386 audio amplifiers. Problem was, they didn't work. They were oscillating rather than amplifying. It was just a pain in the ass. Um, I ended up grabbing a pre-made LM386, which is fine, you know. 386 is a 386, as long as they're real, I guess. And I've got an amplifier here somewhere in the desk, once I unbury it from all the garbage, that is going to allow you to hear what I hear. Now, let me talk for a second about this radio and what you can expect out of it. This is a very broad band tuned radio. You're not picking up one radio station and tuning the dial you're kind of hearing the strongest signal near you and that's kind of it you're just going to get what you get and you're not going to tune you're not going to do anything now you'll notice that this radio or and i'll hold it up and show more pictures and stuff in fact we can we can switch over to a different camera here let's see if i have enough range of motion yeah i think i do let me go to the overhead camera here. Is it? I believe it's connected. I think I can show that. Let's, let's look here. Workbench camera. Does workbench camera work? Nope, that's the workbench screen camera. I don't know what I've got going to this thing. That's the big cable. Oh, I think it's going to the same as the other. All right, hang on. I'm going to have to move a wire. I can do that. I can move a wire. Oh, where's it at? That's audio. Where's my HDMI cable? Oh, where is it? It should be here nearby me. Is it this one? No, that's a different HDMI cable. Is this one? Nope, that's an audio cable. Alright, let me follow the wire. Hold on. It's this giant one here. I mean, it's a really big HDMI cable. Be kind of hard to lose. It's not that one. One of these days, I'll get this all tie strapped down. 
and that's that's the goal we're working towards getting everything in place permanently there we go I see it All right. it's over there got it found it All right, let me hook this up for you We'll see if we can get video out of that. All right, excellent, got it. All right, so here is the radio. So I, I told you that I simplified this. It's like the most simple crystal design you can have. There's not even a wiper sitting here, or I guess it would go like this, wiping across the inductor to select a point. We're just taking the thing at, at whatever value it is and receiving whatever we get out of it. Now, the audio amp I'm using, this is just a simple off of Amazon LM386. You know, I have two of them here. One of them's a two to one, one of them's a 20 to one. I don't remember which one's which, but I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, because the one I want is the 200 to one, because it gives me the game I'm looking for. These are all 200 to ones. Say LM386 on the back. Okay, that's the 200 one. So let me get this one out of here. All right, so the one we want to use is this one right here. And I've got a tiny little 8 ohm speaker connected to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up to this thing. And you are going to be able to hear the music or whatever. Whatever loud AM broadcast signal is present in my area. It might be music, it might be talk radio, I really have no idea. Um, so, I've actually standardized on the BNC connector for my audio connector. Just because that's what my headphones use. And it's a pretty good choice, actually. So I'm going to clip, let's see, I'm going to clip ground to ground. I'm going to clip the audio in to the audio in pin. Let's see. The audio in pin. Good. On the amp. And then we're going to just give the amp um, 5 volts DC. So here's a ground connection. And here is a VCC. And then I actually need to tie the grounds together so that everything is at the same ground potential. And we should be able to turn the amplifier on and give you guys a listen. So we're going to take a clip here. So the radio itself is powered simply over the air. It's just the RF. Um, There is no DC involved here. Let's see, that's ground. The amplifier is using the 5 volt supply. So when I'm listening with just my headphones, no voltage, no external voltage is required, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's one of the, the unique things about crystal radio. All right, here we go. Are you guys ready? to catch a little audio. Drum roll please. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. I'll uh, see if I can adjust the audio levels to make it a little louder. second. What come on done? That's ground. That's ground. There we go. Pretty cool, right? So that's the crystal radio. 
we're getting audio off the aerial, and I was kind of surprised that this was was music. Hey, Jake. Um, I'm going to turn the speaker off so we can cut the noise there, but it's music. I was expecting talk radio. My local AM station that's the strongest happens to be a sister station of an FM station, and they just simulcast it. So I'm getting their FM broadcast on the AM side. And that station is somewhere up around 1,500 kilohertz. Now, I could use a wiper and make this coil effectively longer or sh well, not, I can't make it longer, but I can make the coil effectively shorter and tune a little bit on that AM broadcast band. Now, I'm not going to do that with this radio. I decided when I, when I got into this and discovered that I could do it without a wiper that I was going to do just that. I want this to be the most basic crystal radio possible. And I've accomplished that. And it actually sounds pretty good. Here, let me turn it on again. Pretty cool, right? I mean, it's pretty clear. It's kind of mind-blowing that so few parts can receive a radio signal and turn it into sound. I mean, it's literally two parts. It's a diode, a germanium diode, and a freaking inductor. That's it. Now, I have a couple of things I want to try before we put this radio aside and move on to the next project, which is a more advanced version of the radio. I want to see what happens <coughs> if I put two diodes in parallel. My brain's thinking more detector, more audio. I don't know if that's true or not, but I got some more diodes and I can put one in. In fact, I'm going to try a couple of other things as detectors. Um, not just the germanium diode. I want to try a small signal switching diode. I want to try a rectifier diode. And then, like I said, those uh, those others in parallel. So where is my germanium? Got it. All right. So I've got three different things we're going to use here. So the first experiment is what happens when I put two diodes on it. Let's do that. Let's parallel another diode in here and see if we get more detection. Okay, well the answer is nothing happens. It works exactly the same. So, using two diodes in parallel had no effect on the sensitivity of the detector. Now let's try something else. Let's try a different kind of diode. I'm going to use a 1N4148 called a small signal diode. This is just like you know, really common, just tiny little switching diode. I want to see what happens if I try to use that as a detector. Will it even detect? I have no idea. Let's see. Let's see what it does. It is detecting. It is significantly weaker. But the audio is there. Let's see if you guys can hear it. So I don't know whether you picked up that or not, but just goes to show you that other things can be used as detectors, not just germanium diodes. Although, there was a huge performance difference. Now, one more test. I'm going to use a rectifier diode, like a 1N4001 or 1N4007. I want to see if that'll detect. I have no idea. And if it will, how good will it be? 
I don't know that either. There's one leg. Here's another leg. And the verdict is... Almost imperceptible. So while it probably is detecting, it's almost imperceptible. You have no idea that it's even there. So hands down, the germanium diode, this 1N3400, a this is definitely our high performer. Something's come loose here, hang on. Which wire came loose? This one. And this on the ground here. Cool. Now that had nothing to do with the detector weakness. That was just something that popped loose here for me a second ago. But, yeah. So that's our 1N 43A. Let me clamp this down a little bit so that it is permanently affixed. That's awesome. Cool. So I'm going to disconnect it and give you guys a better look at this thing. And then we'll talk about next steps and where we're going to go from here. Because this was just the first step in what I envision to be a long journey in exploring radio technology. Put that away. Alright, so again, review of the basics of the radio. And like we see, the most basic crystal radio we're calling it. Ah, it's upside down. Okay, let me turn it this way. Maybe you guys see. Most basic crystal radio. We've got a coil, 0.31 millihenries, wound on like a two or two and a half inch PVC pipe. One end of the coil goes to the antenna. The antenna connector jumps to the diode. The diode is our audio path. And this comes out to the headphone. The other end of the coil, that's our ground. It connects to earth ground and also to the headphones. And that right there, that's the whole radio. And as demonstrated, it works. So, project one complete. The most basic crystal radio. So what's next? Well, let me show you some things I learned. This coil, the way it's mounted, and wow, this thing is super durable. I am very pleased with that. Winding this coil by hand was not fun. So I'm going to come up with some sort of coil winding jig. Um, probably basic in the beginning, you know, a hand crank or something. And then probably full-on microcontroller controlled at the end with some steppers and just go batshit crazy with it. I think that could be fun. So what is next? Well, I want to show you. you. You saw how broadbanded that was. You know, you could hear one or two or three different signals in that single um, you know, station that we were hearing. We were hearing it all at once. Well, there's a simple thing we can do to improve the performance of that radio. And that simple thing we can do involves what we call coupling. That's not what happens when people hook up a band camp. I mean, it might be, but coupling, we're going to inductively couple or loosely couple one coil what we'll call the antenna coil to a second coil, what we're going to call the tuning coil. Now what that's going to do for us, in fact let me find a picture so that I can show you. Let's 
see, loosely coupled crystal radio. Yeah, this works. Let's go desk. Here we go. So this, this picture here, or this schematic, kind of shows what I'm describing. You've got, let's see if we can make it bigger. Yeah, right here. And then we scroll over. Cool. So right there. So on the left, the coil on the left is what we're calling our antenna coil. One connection is tied to the antenna, and the other works its way to ground. Now, they've actually got a capacitor, um, a variable, they call it a variable condenser, but it's a variable capacitor um, shown here that they're using to tune that coil. We'll be doing some of that, and we'll explain what that you know, was doing functionally as we go. But for the sake of simplicity, just pretend that the bottom of that coil goes to ground. As RF energy is absorbed by the wire in the air, by the antenna, some of that RF energy in the form of AC is going to inductively couple to the other coil beside it, the coil on the right. That's our tuning coil. Now what I'll probably do is parallel that, that variable capacitor with that tuning coil so that we can then have the ability to selectively tune in stations. Um, it's going to be much less broadband of a receiver than what we were seeing with this most basic crystal set. The rest of the circuit is very similar. We've got a detector, which is our germanium diode. They're showing a fixed capacitor in there. Um, we could put a capacitor in there. We'll get into experimenting with what happens if we do, what happens if we don't. Uh, and you know, then they're showing the headphones. So next step, we're going to build a dual coil. So just like the single coil, I'm going to use a piece of PVC, PVC piping, you know, just standard plumbing piping that you'd get at the big box store. And I'm going to wind two coils around it. One that's a pretty small coil, that's going to be our antenna coil. And one that's a lot bigger, that's going to be our tuning coil. I have an air variable capacitor on the way, I'll have it in a couple of days, that will also use as part of the circuit. Now, capacitors are not necessary to make this work. I could tap that inductor in a bunch of different places and then move the tap point to tune, but that's not very convenient. Having a capacitor connected in parallel with that inductor is going to give me that tune a dial type of behavior, it's going to vary the resonant frequency of this, what we call LC tank circuit. Uh, I don't know what tank circuit means, but that's the phraseology that I'm, I'm seeing here and learning about. So a tuned LC circuit. So yeah, um, I don't really have an idea yet of what kind of turn count or value we're going to use for these inductors. Um, I need to play with it. First, I need to find out what you know, what are good places to start, what are good values to use. And then we'll play with the turns calculator and, and see how many turns we need to make. What I'm finding is that it's not that critical, especially when I start introducing a capacitor into the mix and I give myself the ability to tune and adjust things. Being precise is not that critical. Just get it close. Now, I'm going to find that when it's not super precise, I'll find its limitations. What's the upper frequency limit? What's the lower frequency limit? And then by adjusting those fixed parameters, like the number of turns, the inductance of the coil, we'll be able to see what impact that has on things. So, cool stuff. Um, so, camera setup is going to continue to improve. You know, this other camera that I hooked up looks half decent for what I paid for it. I think it's going to be helpful. Um certainly look a lot better than this camera. 
give us a little bit of mobility so we can focus at things like the spectrum analyzer or the power supply or other things on the bench. But uh, yeah, good times, good times. Uh, I think that's going to do it for right now. Um, picked up a few goodies at Micro Center today. Some tools. Uh, one in particular. So the camera was one thing I got. I'll show you what the camera does. It's cheap, John. And, and I bought it because it was on clearance. It's a little cheap OIEXI 4K vlogging camera, they call it. This was missing the user, user manual, so they took 20 bucks off the price. But it's going to do just fine for what I'm trying to do with it. We don't need an $800 camera for this. It's actually decent. I mean, it comes with a little you know, microphone. Here it is. It comes with a little microphone. I was holding the box up to the wrong camera. This is the thing. See? This little thing right here. Nowhere near the cost of my overhead camera on the bench. That's a that's a thousand dollar camera. But it's got a little cool little remote control for controlling things that I'll probably not mess with. But ooh, zoom. Let me see how that works. You guys can't see it yet, but might not have a battery in it. Doesn't seem to do anything. Let's see. Does it have a battery? It probably does not have a battery. Come on. Release. I'm trying to release it. There we go. Oh, it does have a battery. I wonder why it didn't do anything. Let's try the on and off function. Where's the IR detector on it? Yeah. I don't know why the remote doesn't seem to work. We'll worry about that another time. But um, this is kind of cool. A little bit set, micro bit set. Bunch of small bits and drivers. I'm always looking for screwdrivers on the bench, so I figured that could come in handy. I'll open it up here and we'll take a look at exactly what's in it. The more I look at it, the more I'm impressed with what it has in it. So this thing, here, I have a big camera. We've got a, a little driver, nothing fancy there. With a couple of, you know, this one's flexible, it looks like. Flexible shaft and a fixed shaft. But it also appears to have come with a pair of tweezers. That's always useful for SMD work. Came with a couple of spudgers. It's not not a bad selection at all. And then let's flip it over. We've got a oh man, we got a little you know screen puller, a little suction cup, a little guitar pick spudger, and then this I didn't expect to be in there, a magnetizer demagnetizer. For if you want these bits to be magnetized or demagnetized, and then a whole array of you know these miniature bits. So very cool. We're gonna keep that here at the desk and undoubtedly get a lot of use out of that. If I can put my tools away when I'm done. PT performance tool. 117 piece micro bit set. $21.98. Well worth it. Alright guys, we will catch you later. Um, I may stream later this weekend, depending on how this goes and what we get into and what we get working on. But for now, I think that is probably it. Thanks for watching Project Boost Move Monster. We'll catch you guys later.